Go. Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Rest of my Daisy with part two of our Daisy Model 94 Rev Rider video. Um, this gun just came in and it's basically was having issues with shooting. Uh, discovered why. The original factory air tube, this little guy here, uh, the abutman washer had stuck to the surface of the compression cup, which means as the gun was firing, the air tube was just moving up and down but not compressing any air. And that explained why it would shoot a BB about five feet. So after I got it extracted from the gun, I split the abutment washer off of the face of the compression cup and then put the gun back together. And it was shooting pretty well. Uh, Ten shot strength through the chrono and an average speed of about 257. Now the unusual thing about it was this is the factory mainspring that came out of this gun. And as you can see, it is quite a bit longer than a standard Red Rider mainspring. Uh, coil counts comparable to a cobalt spring diameter slightly less, but still indeed a punchy spring. So now that we have the gun firing again, we proceeded to run through the battery tests that we usually do on most of these guns. We swapped out air tubes. We took the um, original factory seamed air tube, old style, and replaced it with a uh, current production air tube that had been overboard to um, 764s. Now, discovered something while I was in the process of doing this that I wasn't cognizantly aware of. You'll notice that these air tubes are the same distance. You'll notice that the air tube on the left, the current production air tube, has a hole that's cut so that it's recessed in the face of the compression cup. The earlier style compression cup, you'll note, doesn't have those slots cut in it. So the air tube inlet valve or air tube inlet hole is positioned higher on the shaft of the air tube itself. Well, in the process of swapping stuff around, I pulled the uh, old air tube, swapped the cup off. Let me do that real quick. It's a real bear. Swap the old cup off to put it on the new air tube. And you will be probably not amazed to see that when you slide this rascal in deep enough to fit the hole where the uh, pin goes through, you now don't have a port, which means no air gets compressed and run up the air tube. Which explains why, in the first of the uh, five shots I fired in that configuration, we were getting readings in the mid 80s. Uh, after I realized my mistake and replaced the compression cup with a newer style compression cup, we got back up to where the gun had been shooting before. Now, you guys, if you want, you can take a freeze frame of all this chicken scratch, and if you can decipher it, more power to you. But the bottom line is, we went through six different combinations of mainsprings and air tubes, compression cups, and, let me get to the gun here in a second, shot tubes. The uh, original factory shot tube on this gun, nice and tight, good seam, but we also swap out the Model 25 shot tube because you usually pick up some feet per second from that. This is the uh, factory original tube, good spring, good tight squeeze tube, there's no visible light gap in it when you do the uh, hold it up the light and check. Now the original red, the uh, red rider, new red rider spring, which is one of the subs I routinely do, you know, to get from factory original red rider new to Cobalt 327, see what the breakout is, was substantially weaker than the original factory spring on this gun. And the factory spring on this gun is roughly equivalent to the Cobalt 327. The uh, main advantages of, of going ahead and pulling the factory mainspring is this guy is old, probably on the order of 70 years. No telling how many compression cycles have been through it. It's not sacked. It's in good shape. It works. It doesn't have as much oomph as the Cobalt. And the Cobalt is brand new, so should last the next lifetime it needs uh, in service. So we'll make those recommendations to the client as in terms of which kind of power plant he wants in his gun. Uh, essentially, we have sussed all that out. And as you can see, looking at the surface of the piece, it is in fact a painted gun. So it's not blued. It's a Rogers gun. Let's get another roll stamp shot. I don't know if I got a really clear one of those before. Let's see if we can get that rolled over so that we people can read it. Oh, I was in the wrong section. <laughs> I took a quick one of those, but I couldn't tell what was going on on the screen. Yeah, sorry. Now the uh, 
fucking light's giving me problems. Yeah. And, uh, you know what? Rusty stuff is tough to, tough to take pictures of. Yeah. So anyway, here we have it. This is a Plymouth, Michigan. Uh, Model 94. Oh, another secondary item. I know I've talked about this on other videos. These Plymouth, Michigan guns use the smaller diameter compression cups and abutment seals, the Model 25 units. And that's actually what will fit. What came out of this gun This is the one that came out of the gun. And what will fit into it uh, should you need to replace an abutment seal or compression seal or both. Normally you'll do both of those at the same time. Uh, the old style air tube is remarkably similar, similar to the current production air tube with the exception of the fact that the cut for the air intake, as you will notice, is slightly offset. And that would uh, account for why there's a groove cut in the current com compression cups, whereas the old cups did not have that. So be sure and be cognizant of that, cognizant of that if you're working on a uh, Plymouth, Michigan Red Rider. And also, ignore the buttstock on this gun because this is not the factory buttstock. I put the wooden buttstock on because it's longer and easier for me to handle. As we showed you in part one, this is the buttstock that comes with this gun. The plastic job with the uh, Kulo Red Rider logo. But we've uh, done the mechanical assessment. Now the next phase of this particular restoration is going to be see what we can get done with that paint. I have a, gun, a funny feeling that this is going to end up being fire blued because uh, I've never successfully been able to cold blue paint or match get a match done with paint. And we've got some significant damage that's got to be flat filed out of here. Oh, one other thing I discovered on this gun, if we'll take a look here at the leaves. I believe the reason that this pen was pulled was somebody pulled the inner sheath. Now, why you do that, I don't know. But, you know, daisies are daisies. Toy guns are toy guns. Somebody might have decided, hey, I'm going to take it completely apart. Now, the question is, was he 8 years old or was he... 38 years old. We may never know. That's all we've got for you today, kids, as we move along on the uh, restoration of this Daisy Model 94 Red Raider. This is Shane Bruce with Resto Mod Daisy, signing off.